All right, so now we're going to hear uh, about an elastic search cluster named George, George Armstrong Custer by Will Button. Try not to shoot him with arrows. Ready when you are. Hey everyone, my name is Will Button. I'm on the DevOps team at Trax Technologies, and I'm an instructor and author for Egghead.io and Pluralsight.com. So getting Elasticsearch up and running is pretty easy. Getting Elasticsearch to run at scale can sometimes feel like you're in a battle. At Trax, we were first introduced to Elasticsearch through Logstash. We have Logstash nodes in each of our data centers, and they all write back to a central Logstash node where the data is put into a, an Elasticsearch cluster. If you're not familiar with George Armstrong Custer, he's famous for Custer's last stand where in 1876, he was decisively defeated by the Plains Indians tribes at the Battle of Little Bighorn. Now, the Battle of Little Bighorn and Custer's last, and uh, Trax's use of Elasticsearch aren't as unrelated as you might think. We found it incredibly easy with Elasticsearch to correlate our log events and find information without knowing which server it came from or the IP address or packing around SSH keys. So we thought, wow, this Elasticsearch stuff is great. Let's put everything in Elasticsearch. So we did. In hindsight, maybe a more appropriate analogy might have been, wow, this car is sweet. Let's drive it to Australia because the end result was about the same. So we, as we increased our utilization, we started to notice certain servers falling offline. So we would have to go to that server and restart Elasticsearch on it. But the, we weren't really collecting any metrics, right? So we didn't have any insight into what was causing the problem. So we had a meeting. We all got together in a meeting. We said, wow, so Elasticsearch used to work really great. But uh, now it's not working so great. So clearly the problem was with Elasticsearch, and we should have been using solar all along. Well, as you can imagine, things did not improve from this point. They actually got worse. So in addition to the servers crashing, we were reaching the point where the entire cluster was falling over. Whenever this happened, we would have to go to every single node in the cluster and restart Elasticsearch, effectively rebooting the cluster. And this took a lot of time because the servers were either offline or not responsive. So we did what any good DevOps engineer would do, and we automated that. We created a job in our runbook server that would restart the cluster for us, and we lovingly named it the hammer. <laughs> so this really didn't actually help us solve the problem, right? But it did have one benefit. It bought us time, and with that time, we started building out a metrics collection system to try and piece together the events that were causing the cluster to fall over. We used the Elasticsearch stats API endpoints and looked at shard movement, JVM heap, indexing response rate. And then we realized we have one advantage that Custer doesn't have. We can create a new battlefield and try to produce as different outcomes. That's what we did, and this is where Custer got its name. We felt like we were in the Battle of Little Bighorn, so we named this one Custer. The new cluster, well, we named the new cluster Winston because we were never, 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 never giving up. <laughs> then we had two clusters, so we started to compare the metrics between them, and we noticed that the metrics were pretty much on par between the two, with the exception of the JVM heap usage. In our first cluster, the heap usage was very heavy with little to no garbage collection. So we went back to our monitoring system, and we put in alerts so that whenever the heap usage reached a certain level for a server, then it would fire off an alert. We could send in the cavalry and pull that server from the cluster and prevent the entire cluster from going down. The JVM heap itself was teaching us that we were trying to serve up more data from the cluster than we had the capacity for. So we needed to either add additional nodes to the cluster or shut down indices that were no longer in use. In the end, it turns out that the problem was really not the battlefield at all. The problem was a failure on our part to not measure the environment and show up with the right resources necessary to win the battle. It was a long road to get there, and it took teamwork from everyone at Trax to pull this off. 
we were focused on solving the problem and not figuring out who to blame, which is cool because it was probably me. <laughs> and one thing I can't emphasize enough is the importance of measuring everything from day one so that you get those trends and indicators when you start stressing out the system. If you want to see how we record those metrics now, we publish that at bit.ly slash Custer's Cluster, and you can talk to me about it here at the conference or via Twitter. I'm at WF Button. Thank you.